eight stadiums, all completed and all impressive. Oh My Gold traveled to Qatar just two months away from the start of the 2022 World Cup, and we were left gobsmacked by the ultra-modern stadiums that will be used. We also discussed some controversial topics with Dr. Cool, the man in charge of the cooling systems inside the stadiums. Strap yourselves in, we'll give you a guided tour just weeks away from the start of the World Cup. My friends, this is the stadium of the next World Cup final. When we traveled to Qatar at the start of September, we visited a few of the stadiums. And honestly, we were left in awe of the Lusail Stadium. Situated 20 kilometers from Doha, this 80,000 capacity stadium will host the World Cup final. And it is simply incredible. During the Lusail Cup, we were able to check out this little wonder up close. The atmosphere around the ground was fantastic, but it was the stadium's interior that left us speechless. It's simply breathtaking. The Lasail Cup saw Saudi Arabian champions Al Hilal take on Egyptian champions Zamalek. And it was Al Hilal that came out winners thanks to this well taken finish by former Manchester United striker Odiani Gallo. Wait, this guy's still playing and bagging goals like that? The occasion came to a close with a vibrant fireworks display. And if these scenes are anything to go by, the opening ceremony is set to be utterly insane. We also had a chance to visit another stadium. Hi, you my brothers. We are at Al Jaloub Stadium. France will play their first game of the World Cup here against Australia, and the stadium is amazing. Al Janoub Stadium is also a feast for the eyes, a 40,000-seater marvel. Check it out. While there are clearly some organizational issues to iron out before the start of the tournament, one thing is for sure, the stadiums will be up to scratch. Take a look at Stadium 974, for example, or the Khalifa International Stadium, Qatar's home ground and the venue for the third-place playoff. What about the Education City Stadium, Fuar? And then there's the Al Thumama Stadium, which will host one of the quarterfinals. The likes of Neymar, Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi and Mbappe will be gracing these pitches come November and December. Legends like Cafu are already full of excitement. This is a Copa do Mundo sensacional. O Brasil, I had the opportunity with Brazil to win a Copa do Mundo in Asia and in America. If I was playing football, it would be an enormous pleasure to be here playing this Copa do Mundo. There's no question, these stadiums are simply magnificent. But we should address two key controversies around these venues. The first, air conditioning. Each stadium will be fitted with air conditioning so that fans and players alike don't get too hot during games. But what about the planet? Some people think that this World Cup will be the least environmentally friendly tournament in history. But according to Saud Abdul Ghani, nicknamed Dr. Cool, the man in charge of the air conditioning systems during Qatar 2022, that's not true. In any big event, international event, the most carbon uh, coming from people traveling, using air travel to an event rather than event itself. If you look at, for example, Formula One uh, events, uh, cricket events, uh, rugby events, this is the most polluting factor rather than the event itself. Number two, in all the stadiums for us, we uh, develop a, uh, uh, we get this energy from a renewable source, which is the solar. Uh, solar. We have PV panels feeding our grid, and we recycle that air. So all the time we're pushing cold air, taking the heat of people, taking the sweat of people, the humidity that people put in the space, bring it back to the machine, take that away, clear the air from other debris like pollen, dust, uh, hair, skin, and then push it back again to people. Another objective for Qatar is to ensure that these stadiums remain in use once the competition is over. In other words, the country hopes that the stadiums built specifically for this event are repurposed once the tournament draws to a close. For example, the Lusail Stadium will serve as a school, office space, and community center. As for the Education City Stadium, that will become the home ground for the Qatar women's team and will also house two schools. And the 28,000 seats from the Al Bayt Stadium will be donated to developing nations after the conclusion of the World Cup. But there has been another major talking point leading up to the event, one even more serious. The working conditions of those helping build the stadium. According to The Guardian, more than 6,000 workers lost their lives during the construction of these stadiums. The Emir of Qatar himself has responded to criticism. We understood that we had a problem with the work on our construction sites, and we took some strong measures in record time. We modified the law and punished those who treated employees poorly. And Dr. Cool echoed those sentiments during our discussions with him. When we constructed this stadium, we looked even where to house uh, workers in order to make sure that they don't use buses too much to come uh, to stadium. Most of our stadiums, we have workers camp, 
which is a very, very uh, comfortable camp. And people walk from the camp to this building site and back again. So uh, we looked at every single one gram of carbon we can save. So come and learn the actions we've done in Qatar and we're open to tell you that. So we want your opinion, oh my goalers. Are you excited for the 2022 World Cup to start? And what do you think of these futuristic stadiums? Make sure you let us know in the comments.